I'm going to show you how to make this map showing six years of Columbia Glacier's retreat. This is the Sentinel-2 Land Cover Explorer, and this is the Columbia Glacier just west of Valdez, Alaska. It's had a pretty dramatic retreat over the past six years. Here's a direct comparison between 2017 and 2022. I'd like to create a map in ArcGIS Pro showing this retreat, so I'll download the data. I'll grab all six years, and each year is a moderately sized GeoTIFF. And here are those same images added into ArcGIS Pro. I'll zoom in closer to my area of interest. Now, I want to clip these images to just show this extent. So I'll right click each of these images and choose Data, Export Raster, and then I'll choose the clipping geometry of my current extent. And here in this group, I've put all six of those resulting clipped images. Now, I have some wacky symbology planned for this water and ice, and that means I'm going to have to convert this to vector polygons. So I'll open up the raster to polygon geoprocessing tool and I'll convert all six years to an individual vector layer. And I'll keep simplify turned on so that I don't get the stair stepped appearance of a traced pixel. And here's a group where I've put all six years of the vectorized land cover. Now, if I look at the attributes for these polygons, I can see that the code for water is one and the code for ice is nine. Knowing this, I can do a definition query to isolate my polygons to only show water. And here is a group where I've isolated just the water in every year. And I'll open up the symbology panel for this water layer, and I'd like to give it a soft coastal effect, so I'm going to give this a gradient fill. I'm going to make this water polygon blue, but I want to give the coastal area a slightly lighter version of a blue. And then the inner areas get that normal darker blue. And I'll give this coastal gradient an absolute extent instead of relative, and I'll make it 24 intervals and spanning 24 points, which looks, oh, a little bit abrupt. So I'm going to open this color scheme and I'm going to add some color stops and just scooch them a little closer in the light direction. So it's not such a linear blunt gradient. And that looks much more pleasant. Next, I'd like to turn this outline into like a nice coastal beach effect. So I'll drag it underneath the fill and I'm going to give it a gradient stroke and I'll give it a color of like a, a gravelly sandy beach and then it'll fade to a transparent version of that same color. I'll increase its thickness so we can actually see it. And oh, uh, whoops, it's backwards. Let me just hit this reverse button. And now we have a gradient here. Let's just take a look. A beach. Now one last trick for this water. I have this image of ripply water and I've made it completely grayscale and almost entirely transparent. I want to overlay this so I have a watery texture on top of my water because water. So I'll add a fill layer and I'm going to make that a picture fill and I'll just navigate to this picture. I'll give it a size of something big enough that we can see and then I'll hit apply and see what we get. Ripply. Now I don't have to do that styling over and over again. I can save a ton of time by just saving this symbol to a style. And I'll save it in my favorite style, which makes it available in the gallery tab of the symbology panel. So I can just copy and paste this style to all sorts of polygons. It's a big time saver and it ensures consistency across your map. Now I'm using the world imagery as a base map, but my water extent is from 2017 and clearly my base map imagery is much newer than that because the ice has retreated all this way. It'd be nice if I could have ice all the way up to this water so I could continue to use this as a base map and just show the water kind of encroaching on the ice. But how do I get old imagery base maps? This is a job for world imagery way back. I'll zoom to my area of interest and I'll show only the historic versions of my imagery base map that have changed in this area. And then I can just mouse over each of these historic releases of the imagery base map to see which one looks best for me. And this one from 2018 looks like it'll fit the bill. It looks good, it's cloud free, and the ice should come down far enough to meet my water. So I'll open the ArcGIS online details for this item and I'm just gonna snag this URL. Meanwhile, back in Pro, I I can add data from a path and I'll just paste in this URL. And now I have a new base map with vintage imagery that matches my data. I've also created this group called ice and in it, I've put a copy of all of these vector layers, but this time I've done a definition query isolating just the ice type, which happens to be grid code nine. For the ice symbology, I'd like to give it a glacial sort of look. So I'm gonna give it a gradient fill and I'll go from a deeper turquoise greenish color on the outside 
and it'll transition into a lighter turquoise color. And I'll make the size absolute so it's consistent no matter what the size of the polygon is. And I'll make it a pretty big interval, so 33 steps over 33 points. And it looks nice and glacial, but I wanna bake these colors into the texture of the ice below. So I'm gonna use a blend mode called Overlay. And now I have the best of both worlds, and I really like it. Except if you look here, you'll notice that the ice data doesn't correspond perfectly to the season of the base map image. And so we have ice over green imagery, and it just makes this kind of bright green effect, which does not look icy. So with my control key pressed, I'll drag down to make a copy, and I'm just gonna make this version white. And this white layer, I'll give a blend mode of color, and that'll make everything underneath it grayscale. It's like a grayscale mask. And now we don't have colors interfering with our blend mode for our glacially styled polygons. I'd like to add a sense of mass or gravity to these glaciers, so I'm gonna fake a drop shadow. I'll drag the stroke underneath the fill, and I'll add two effects. The first effect is wave, to give it a nice irregular waviness, and the second effect is a move effect, so I can offset it. I'll change this solid stroke to a gradient stroke, because that looks shady. I'll give it a thickness of, say, five, and for the color, I'm gonna make it a very deep, dark blue, all the way to a transparent version of that blue. These are the tricks, people. Now let's make that wave effect a little bit more erratic. I'll choose a random, and I'm going to give it an amplitude of 1, which is wave height, and then a period of 12, which is wave length. And now I need to move that shadow to the bottom right, where all good shadows go. And now our glaciers look like they've got some heft, and they're throwing some shade. Now to turn this sense of scale up to 11, I'm going to duplicate this shadow line, and I'm going to make it a solid stroke, and I'll turn it white. I'm going to do a raised lip on the other side. So I'll make it a width of 2, and I'll just play with the wave effect a little bit so it looks good. And I'm going to give it an opposite move effect, negative x and positive y. And actually, let me drag this highlight layer underneath the shadow layer. Okay, let's see what we get. Okay, I like this a lot better. The effect of the light hitting the upper lip of these glacial lobes make it seem like a real thing. And of course, we'll be good citizens and save this symbol to a style so that we can reuse it for the ice of every other year. And of course, we can't forget to make a copy of every year's ice layer and make it white. And we'll give those white polygon layers a blend mode of color to make everything underneath them black and white. And we give all of our ice styled layers an overlay blend mode so that we can see the texture of the real ice below. And then we can export an image of each year's water and ice extent and show the retreating movement of the Columbia Glacier over these past six years. And if you're feeling ambitious, you could even trace the terminal extent of each year and compare those to previous years. 